We serve a good God. We are grateful for that. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for leading us in worship. Evan didn't want to participate in worship this morning, so we were down in the, <laughs> in the play area. He's down there right now. I want to welcome uh, our visitors from New York. They're vacationing up here. And I forgot your names already, but we're honored to have you. Um, one thing I love about pastoring here is that every summer, we have summer people, and we have certain vacationers that come. Uh, so you're always welcome to come to your vacation in the area. So honored to have you guys with us this morning. Um, a couple of just a, a quick shout out to Kevin and Bill. If you see the sign out there, we have a new church sign. We're in the process of putting it down. And I was here yesterday. They did 99% of the work. I went out there for one of the work. <laughs> and there's huge rocks. And so when Kevin and this big, Kevin and Bill were drilling down in there, and so they, they uh, work admirably. And so there's still some more work to do, as you can see. I was amazed. There has to be, I was thinking there has to be some prophetic picture in that. Uh, it has to be just the hugest rocks and the hugest stones right under the surface of the ground. And uh, so just thank you to you guys. And so that's why the sign is like it is out there. We'll have that up whenever it's whenever it's done. So you guys will like the sign. So thank you to you guys for helping and doing that on your own. Which I, was, I called my wife and I said, I didn't tell you this, I called my wife and I said, I think this is going to take a long time. <laughs> and I said, well, they seem happy to be doing it, so I guess it's okay. But uh, just thank you guys for your I mean that. Thank you for helping. Um, also, the diaper drive, uh, Kevin, there's actually some money that was given last week for that. Uh, we're doing that. There's diapers downstairs. We're taking to the Paul Cup Neighborhood Center. Um, we also took up some money last week. We'll take up some more this week, just designated as diapers. Uh, and I guess Kevin's going to make the BJ's the run. There's great deals there. And all of that's going to the Paul Cup Neighborhood Center. Okay, so that's through this week and next week for June. Um, so before the kids go, Phil's going to be sharing next week about his adventures to Peru uh, and our fifth Sunday is Mission Sunday so we're going to be taking up an offering for him and we look forward to hearing about all that God did in your life and your ministry uh, while you're there this time. He's filling in for Mary. Mary's in Texas this week and so thank you for being ready to help out so the kids can go to their classes. Thank you, Jill. Thank you, Jill. Healing room is tonight from 5 to 7. Again, in the healing room is prayer. We got someone calls from Houston, Texas. And prayers that are called tonight. And prayer work on the phone. How she called us, I don't know. <laughs> but she called us. And so, if you know anyone who needs prayer, uh, healing, anything deliverance wise, 5 to 7 here on Sunday nights. Prayer is Tuesday night at 7. I always love prayer because there's a different expression every week. It's not the same every week. I like that. It's not stale. Each week, the Lord shows up in a different way, and we're always blessed. I always leave nine out of ten times and really met the Lord. And so if you're able to come Tuesday at 7 for prayer, um, I did mention Phil's going to be sharing next week about Peru. Uh, Tim Galvanis will be with us here uh, the 14th of July, and 21st of July is our picnic and water baptism. So I'm doing a class on the 14th if you're interested, which I know some of you are. Some of you are aren't here today, and I'll be meeting with you separately. So if, you, if you're not able to be here on the 14th when I have the class, just come see me. It's just a policy I have. I don't like to baptize you just without explaining what the scripture says. Um, I don't want to just dunk you and have you wet. You have no idea what you did. Um, so we're going to explain in the scripture. It's a, it's a serious thing. Identify with the Lord, Amen. Uh, and so, well, I want to do that. Uh, and as Tom Scarella, as you guys know, is coming in September. Uh, pray to those meetings and uh, looking forward to seeing what the Lord has and what the Lord's going to do. Did your sisters get back safely? Are they still in town? Good. Okay. Okay. So we had a good time and it was good talking. 
talking to them last week, and one of them all from Nigeria. One lives in the UK, and one lives in, still lives in Nigeria. And so I just love uh, different expressions of the body of Christ from different parts of the world. The body of Christ is global. Amen. Amen. And I really appreciate it. What we're all is everyone okay temperature wise? <laughs> I, I know some get cold and some get hot. Everyone okay? Yes or no? Yes. Okay. I'm chilly, but I'll be okay. I'll be okay. I, I want you guys to be comfortable. Uh, I'll be. I'll get warm. I'll be comfortable. I'll be comfortable. So I feel like there's another announcement, but I don't know what it is. I know we're having something for the kids at our house on Friday night. Um, but I think everyone knows about that. What's that? Women's is next Sunday night at our house. Thank you. On the 30th, Sunday night uh, at our house at 7 o'clock. Women's meeting. Uh, we'll be there. Okay. Yeah. One thing I love too about this church, and I was thinking about this yesterday, is that certain people will be gone and certain people will be here. Uh, every church is different and unique in its own way. And one thing this church is each week, there's just a different diversity of people. Same board, but it's the same. It's just I, I, I like it. It's a different expression, and, and we're all part of the body of Christ, and it's a wonderful thing. Amen. Uh, so I, I want to share a few things with you this morning, just as a reminder. Last week I spoke on the Lord's Prayer, and I had Father's Day in my mind as our Father who art in heaven, and it's something I feel like I could have just taken my time with, gone with each step and each step. My dad was here. And, and he told me it was, he doesn't hear all my sermons, but he hears some. And he told me it was his favorite message he's heard from me since I've been in this church. It was very practical. Uh, if you struggle with prayer in any way, shape, or form, how do I pray? How do I get into prayer? Um, you can go back and listen to it on the website. Uh, I can go through it again. It's a very, very practical. I use it myself sometimes when I get up in the morning. Pray in the Spirit. Pray and I go through the Lord's Prayer and just stop on each it's kind of like a, almost a prayer guide. We got it from Jesus, right? And it's just a, it's a prayer guide, and it's uh, I just encourage you with that. And as, as believers, we should be people of prayer. And, uh, and everyone's not called to be an intercessor. Everyone's not called that we can all intercede. I've, I've learned that. You know, all of us can pray and can pray over situations and see God work in our lives. Okay. And so I just want to encourage you. It's just a it's not the only way. I, go over something a little different this morning. On similar lines, I think will be helpful. Uh, turn with me to Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. And just as a quick reminder, I've been speaking on the parables of the kingdom of God, and there's eight of them in Matthew chapter 13. I'm going through them. As a quick recap, parables of the kingdom, the first one, remember, is the sower. And some of them fall, some of the seeds are fall by the wayside, the enemy comes up and swoops them up. Uh, some fall on stony ground. There's nothing there, so I was kind of thinking out there that we were digging. It must be like what the Lord had in mind. <laughs> stony ground. Some of it uh, is sown into thorn, so as it sprouts up the care, <coughs> the main riches of this life consume it. And some falls on good soil and it produces 30, 60, or 100 fold. The Lord says he compares his kingdom to a man sowing seeds. And it says, you know, out of four, really there's only one that produces. And it produces at different levels. And then he talks about the wheat and the tares, how the wheat and the tares explains a lot, just as a reminder of how we grow up in this world and we still see evil. We still see things that the Lord can sometimes use that to grow us and mature us and to make the wheat stand out from the tares. Uh, we also spoke about the parable of mustard seed, how it can start small. But it can grow. The Lord can do small beginnings in your life that amplify when you steward. So let me just say this. When you properly steward what God gives you, whether it's big or small, that qualifies you to steward more. And I like to go back to the story of Genesis where the Lord did not allow rain to fall until there was a man to steward the ground where the seed was sown. And so the Lord often will give us something small, and He sees what we do with it. I watch myself, I like to watch others. You're given a small task in any area of life. Do you steward it well, or is it too small for you? It's 
a good test. If I steward it well, the Lord will increase. We also talk about the parable of 11. It speaks of the, the influence of the kingdom of God. Last week we spoke about the, or two weeks ago, the parable of the hidden treasure. And there's different ways to interpret that. I looked at it from the standpoint of where your treasures, there your heart will be also. And selling out for that. This week is the parable of the pearl of great price, which is another parable where if you read it and chew on it and meditate on it, people read it and interpret it in different ways. Um, I have a certain way I'm going to look at it this morning, and I have really one main point that I want to bring out. It's like the Lord put on my heart. But it's, a chap- it's in chapter 13, as I said in Matthew, and it's in verse 45 through 46. It's the parable of the pearl of great price. And it says, again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking beautiful pearls. But when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had, and he bought it. I'm going to look at it this morning as church being the pearl of great price. Andrew said something earlier. <coughs> Our God is a seeking God, right? And even if you go, He came to what? Seek and save that which was lost. If you look at Luke 15, different parables, He goes and He seeks after. It's a, it's a, it's a picture, the lost coin. Okay? In the parable of the, uh, the Father, the lost, the lost Son, and the lost sheep. God is a seeking God and He seeks after us and He purchases us. We've been bought with the price, right? We've been redeemed with the precious blood of the Lamb. There's an old song. Uh, if you know, you can do it somebody. Victory in Jesus, Savior forever. He saw me, he bought me with his redeeming yeah. blood. And we used to sing that when I was growing up in the church. It's a beautiful song. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He purchased me with the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so I, I, I want to look at this kind of from that perspective. Uh, as a quick background, the pearl... Sometimes I like to read stuff about history and context of Scripture because it's fascinating. Pearls were so valuable, it's like the diamonds today, that what people would do. And I read this from a reliable source, but I have a hard time believing it, but I, I do. They would take themselves, they did not have the modern equipment we have to go in, so they would practice just not breathing, see as long as they could do it. They would weigh themselves down. Uh, in something, go down to the bottom of the usually like Indian Ocean, the Red Sea, or different seas, excuse me, not the ocean. And they would go down all the breath as long as they could and search for the oysters with the shell in it, with the, the pearl. Because if they found that pearl, they're going to be filthy rich. <laughs> so it's like if I have nothing to lose and I'm poor, they would go down and search for those pearls. They were so valuable that the Romans and the Egyptians would actually worship the pearls. You remember reading in Timothy? Uh, Paul talks about how women would adorn themselves with pearls. Uh, there's different stories of different princesses. They were a certain pearl. Remember in the book of Revelation? Uh, it talks about the 12 gates of the city, each had one pearl there. Seeing that, even the pearly gates will open. There's another one that he does. It's a, it's a picture in the scripture of something that's valuable. What did Jesus say? Don't cast your pearls on swine. For swine. So it's something very valuable and something that's not valuable. And it's. it's rather interesting to read all of that and to see it in the scriptures. And it was a very valuable gem. Uh, let me say this, and I'm going to give you some more context to kind of get where I'm going to get at. The teacher in me sees a lot of different ways and areas of truth you could look at with this. I'm going to just highlight one, and I won't be too long with it. But a pearl forms. Uh, it's an oyster. I actually have a book at home. It's on the parables. Uh, all the parables in scripture on the cover of it. An oyster with a little pearl in the middle. Uh, that's, that's how he's, he's got the cover of his book. And uh, the pearl is formed when there's an irritant that comes in, sand or something, to the oyster. And it can take, it can irritate it, it can take up to seven years, but the, the, the oyster shell is something named called a nacre or nacre. And what it does is it'll kind of get in and attack that, uh, that irritant, which will wrap itself around and wrap itself around over the course of time it forms it develops the pearl. It take time, and it's something I believe the church, the pearl is formed at the oyster. The church is also revolved through the precious blood of Jesus Christ. They pierced to the side, the blood of the water came out, we washed in the blood of Jesus, we brought her to the word of God, we cleansed ourselves. And so we were purchased with the blood of Jesus Christ. But there's something that, that just struck my heart 
I'm not going to be along with it this morning, uh, but I feel like it, it was so heavy on me, I feel like perhaps it's for someone here. I was, I think of how the Lord forms His church and He forms His people. Is the Lord constantly forming me? Yes, He is. Am I born again? Yes. Yet He's dealing with me, He's growing me, He's maturing me, He's, he's forming me in different places of my heart, different places of my life. Sometimes the formation as the, the pearl that we see is done in hiddenness, it's done in the sea. The sea throughout Scripture speaks of, uh, Jude talks about the raging sea, uh, Isaiah speaks about it too, the restlessness of wickedness, the restlessness of the sea. We can be found in the depths of, of a world that seems to be crying and lost. There can be darkness, there can be different things, yet the Lord's still forming us in the midst of it, we're aware of it. Sometimes in quietness and hiddenness. And that's really what the Lord kind of put on my heart uh, this morning as the preparation of how Jesus will take us in a place where it's going to be seemingly dark and quiet and form us into something that's beautiful. Because at the end of the day, the pearl shouldn't just stay in the shell. The pearl is meant to be displayed and worn and seen. Just as the church of Jesus Christ is meant to be on display. Yet you still have to go through a process of formation sometimes that's hidden as quietness. And I think there's a lost part in our world today and in the body of Christ. It says of Jesus that he often withdrew into the wilderness to pray. Right? He would go up on the mountain alone to pray. There's a lost part in our society of quietness. Now when I speak of what I'm saying now, there's a difference between loneliness and solitude. I'm not speaking of loneliness. Well, I feel so alone. Uh, I talked to Erin about that. She's a counselor. But there's a difference between being alone and loneliness. The, the, the part of being alone and meeting with God is what I would call solitude. And it's a lost art. It's not the only way to meet God. It's not the only way the pearl is formed. It's not the only way we're formed. But it's something that we've missed. I was uh, looking today or this week there's a, a study out, and there's a, I don't know if it was a, this is a trend, there's a young person that actually had a horn growing the back of their head. Has anyone heard about that? It's a bone. And, and what they're finding is that in younger generation, because they spent so much time doing this, mm-hmm. it's actually altering their physical, and they said, we don't know how that's going to grow as they grow up, because we're so locked in. This. I was speaking to someone recently. He said, I can't, I don't have a smartphone because if I do, I'm going to be on the internet all day. I'm not opposed to that. I, I say this Mark Luther had the print press, the church today has the internet, and we can reach the world. You know, we have, we put messages on our website, and I'll get a, a emails from someone in Kenya who's been listening to it. Okay, the kingdom of God in Rogue, I can use technology, I'm not opposed to that. I don't hear my sermon this way. But sometimes we can fill ourselves with so many things, so much noise. And, and if you stop and think about it, sometimes the outside noise I have is used to mask the inner chaos that's going on inside of me that I'm more can fill. Try this. Some people are unable to be alone. There's so much busyness in our life. There's so much going on in society. The TV's constantly blaring. The news, I told you I was listening to the news one time. We don't have cable, but it was on. I was listening to something on YouTube. And everything that happens, da da breaking news. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. breaking news. <laughs> and I found after a while, I was getting irritated. It was hard. It was just I was wrestling with it. What is this? And that's how a lot of us live. In a constant state of turmoil, a constant state of stress. And we've, we've forgotten the false art of getting, of quieting ourselves and hearing from God passage I'm going to show you in a minute. Listening to him. If you study a lot of the old timers, those who have gone on before us so with the Lord right now, one of the main things they had, and they had a benefit of not having all the chaos we have in our world today, but they were able, and one of the things they would always talk about is there are times they would be alone. And they would seek the Lord in solitude. They would hear from him in quietness. We can also hear from God in noise. I'm not saying we can't. But it's a lost star where I don't hear from him. Quietness, solitude, and make time for that in my day. Let me give you one more. This is for parents. It's 
some of our parents aren't here today. Uh, my brother-in-law sent us into a book by a secular author. There's a great principle in it, and he was talking about depression rates among uh, children. And this would be good for you as a you know your child grows up. One of the main reasons it's skyrocketed, and they, they test it, is kids who spend more than two hours a day on their phones, on computers, their depression rates are through the roof. Okay, uh, and, and those who are not, who are out more often, and I believe it's because we're made for fellowship with one another. I, I was laughing, there was a, a pastor who said one time I was with my wife, and we are next to each other in bed, we both had our computers, we were commenting on the same thing to each other, and we both looked at each other and laughed and said, why are we doing this? <laughs> we're sitting right next to each other, and we're doing this. That might not be like a verbal noise, but it's a noise that we're getting from someplace else, and we're not in tune with the Lord. There's something that we have, a spiritual life, and it's a free gift from God, right? Salvation, I, I did nothing to earn it. He did everything. All I did was say yes and thank you. Okay. It is also, it's also a process. It's also something that I labor for. One of the ways I labor, try it. Just quiet myself. If you're not used to it, quiet yourself for five minutes. And see, sometimes if you're not screaming, I need to turn on the TV. I go in my car, I better turn on the radio. I can't do this. I can't. There's nothing wrong with those. But when it's our default setting, perhaps there's something else going on that we need to quiet ourselves to to deal with. Amen? The outward noise can shield you from what's going on inside my heart. The Lord needs to deal with it and work with it. Amen? And so, there's First Kings. Let me just turn. You guys should know. You don't have to turn there with me. You probably know the story. If you know your Bible, you probably know where I'm going. When I was in Bible school, we had a teacher. His name was Mark Mills Powell. He was a, the most prototypical uh, British man. I'm sure your sister was here today. He was just he was, he was just a, a glove. He was, he was a wonderful man. He was a charismatic Episcopalian, actually. He was glad. And he would teach our class, and he would always say this before we started. He said, you need to learn the sound of sheer silence. <laughs> he used to drive me up the wall. He said, learn the sound of his British accent, of sheer silence. And he gets that in First Kings, if you remember when Elijah was running from Jezebel and he was having a pity party. You ever have pity parties? I have a pity party sometimes. And he says this in chapter 19. The Lord says, Then he said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind tore into the mountain and broke the rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, still small voice. Other translations call that sheer silence. The Lord can speak in noises. You go back to 2 Kings chapter 3, you'll find Elisha. We need to hear from the Lord. He said, bring me in position. Okay, I'm not opposed to that. But there's times we can only really hear from Him when I still myself and I open up my heart to Him and listen and have a deposit from Him. The Word of God through prayer. Amen. So all stars we have. Um, Don Whitney, who's a Baptist minister, he made this statement. He said, one of the cost of technological advancement is a greater temptation to avoid quietness. And so many of us need to realize the addiction we have to noise. Amen. I spoke on something some time ago. I don't know if you remember it or not. If you do great, if you don't, that's fine. There's, there's an art, and we allow the church to allow the New Age movement to counterfeit. Meditation. Yeah. It's meditating, not opening myself up to anything, but meditating on the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> In Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, it says, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, and that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it, for then you will make your way prosperous and have good success. Let me take back a second before I do that. If you're someone who's not in the habit of, of learning to be quiet, learning the art of meditating on the Word of God, and focusing and meditating, reading scriptures and meditating on His goodness and His faithfulness, uh, there's a, a devotional writer who made this statement, and it's a good thing to do. He said, What I recommend you do is make it in black and white. What do you mean by that? He said, Make it in black and white. 
part of your calendar. So some of us have such hectic lives, such busyness. So you go to your calendar and say this, whatever time that frame it is for you, book it, mark it. It's my time with the Lord. No one's going to move me from that. It's a date. So if I have something I write it down from this time to this time, it really says, hey brother, let's go get coffee. And I can't, I have another appointment yeah. after me. Yeah. It's my appointment with him. Um, oftentimes we can put that aside for other things. I'm just as guilty as well. But it's just a principle or it's a thing. So sometimes when we have moments when I make my time and I set it for God and I go into that secret place with him. I go into my work. I go into the Word of God. I can go into prayer. And my mind is filled with chaos. My mind is filled with... You know, I had that happen to me this week. I had a situation at work that just really upset me. <laughs> I was coming here yesterday. It was like, Lord, I can take care of this. <laughs> just staying on me. That happens to all of us. Amen. And so if I take time to, to really focus and do and meditate on the Lord, and meditate on Him, I'm going to read some passages to you. It says in Psalms chapter 19, verse 14, it says, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. That's one of my favorite prayers to pray. Psalms chapter 19, verse 14. One of my favorite prayers. Lord, let the words of my mouth as I speak and Lord, the meditations of my heart. He was written words that everybody meditates. We just turn it over to the new age. So I can't do that. I mean, they're meditating on the Lord and on His goodness or on something. I don't know things start rolling in my mind. It says this in Psalms 104, verse 34. It says, Let my meditation be pleasing to Him. As for me, I shall be glad in the Lord. Philippians 4.8, one of my favorite scriptures. Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good repute, there's any excellence, anything worthy of praise, dwell in these things. I've shared this story here before, but it's worth reminding you that I don't know if you remember. There was a minister in England named Malcolm Smith, and he was just a prodigy, just a genius of a man. I think by the time he was 16 year old, he memorized the Bible. And he was in Bible school, and one of his teachers, no, it wasn't one of his teachers, it was someone who came in who really had to walk with the Lord. And he said, Young man, you know the letter of the law, but you don't know the Spirit. I don't know the Spirit of the Lord. He said, well, what, what do I do? And he said, the guy in town, he said, go to this town. <laughs> he went to this town. He never saw the man again, but he went and found himself looking into a farm. And he found a cow in the middle of the pasture. He just watched the cow for 10 minutes. He shared this here before. And he watched how the cow chewed grass. And I shared this here before. Someone told me afterwards that cow, I think, has seven stomachs. And he said he watched the cow chew chew and chew. My granddad used to do that. He lost his teeth, so we would eat. We always kind of joke. <laughs> We'd all be done and he'd still be chewing on his second bite. He would chew. He would chew. The Lord spoke to his heart. He said, that's what I'm talking about. Meditating on the Lord. What does it mean? It means I go through the scriptures. Lord, I've got a million things on my mind. I've got chaos on the inside of me. It's easy to strike that chaos with joy, but I need to come into the place of sheer silence where you're the still small voice. So I take a scripture, and the kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed a good seed in the field. Meditate on it and chew on it. Go to the Psalms if you're not used to doing it. Go to the Psalms, chew on it, meditate on it. Something I'm learning about myself, I heard it from someone else, and I'm learning it myself as well. We do the Bible reading plan, at least I do it. I hope some of you are doing it as well. It's good and healthy, and I like it. Read through the scriptures. It's good, but there's nothing like taking just a passage, just a chapter, just a book, or just a verse, and just chewing on it and not moving from it. Or going into my quiet place, and just chewing and chewing and chewing until it becomes alive and like the cow constantly chewing over it, meditating on it. Table. Keeps growing layer by layer by layer. I'm opening up myself. There's no outside chaos and noise. The only thing I'm opening up myself to is the Lord. It's Word. And then one thing that, that's counterfeit, they say in meditation, is I empty my mind. No, you don't. You fill your mind. You renew your mind with the Word of God. <laughs> and you focus and you dwell on the I'm going to give you a couple other scriptures if I wrote them down. Uh, Psalms. 
give me just a second to go through the Psalms because these are, are good. It's a, it's a healthy and it's a good practice to learn the art of silence, to learn the art of being alone. Jesus often withdrew into the wilderness to pray. And there's a formation that happens when I'm alone that can happen in no other way. Do you know when I feel the most refreshed? Actually, there's two times I feel. Sometimes I feel refreshed when I'm going out to lunch with Him. And we've talked about the Lord. We've gone over because I need the body of Christ. There's times I can come into this sanctuary here alone. And the Lord just comes in and says, it's the, Lord, it's the hand of the Lord is upon me. The only thing sometimes it comes with a heaviness and just Lord. And I meet him, and it's just me and him here, no one else, and just praying the spirit and walking around. No one, no one around me. And I can leave, and I can feel like a brand new person. It's like I've taken a shower and the spirit. <laughs> the Lord's just washed over me this morning because I'm made for that. Amen. I'm also made for interaction. I'm also made for noise. <laughs> I'm also made for worship, like it says in Elisha, but I'm also made for silence. Disregard that you lose a part of your formation. And God intends for all of us. And then spiritual development is not just this, that, or the other. Often we have strengths and we just say, do this, do this, do that. There's a wide segment of things. Some people excel in some areas, while others don't. And that's where you need the body of Christ to come in. I do really well. I, I said this to you really well it's in silence and being alone with God. Just do it. You're good with it. Some people don't. Some people do. And I go back to another Bible school story. When I was in Bible school, we had a guy passionate to the Lord, and he was as loud as loud could be. He was from Trinidad and Tobago. Loud as loud could be. <laughs> and I learned to meet the Lord and the loudness that this man carried as well. Amen. I can meet the Lord. That makes sense in different ways. And now I'm focusing on this. And so Dr. Bruce Demers said this. He said, A quiet at heart is our best preparation for all this work of God. Meditation refocuses us from ourselves and from the world so that we reflect on God's work, His nature, His ability, and His works, so that we prayerfully ponder, use, and chew on the words of Scripture. The goal is simply to permit the Holy Spirit to activate the life giving word of God. I'm going to make one more point, then I'm going to wrap it up. One thing that technology gives us, one thing that the busyness of our world gives us, is if we're not careful, we allow other people to think for us. In my opinions and on God, my opinions on the Word of God, my opinions on what God can and can't do is formulated by someone else. And a good example, I was talking to Willie's sister last week from Nigeria, and I heard really bad stories about the things going on in Nigeria with Christians there. And I, news and I talked to her I said how are things going in Nigeria and she told me she said you can't believe the news she said things are good they are they're targeting one little thing she said they're just trying to create chaos and conflict and things like not that there's not something to pray for but it wasn't the level I thought and if we're not careful we can allow this person or that person or this or that or the other to do all of our thinking for us and for long my thoughts on God, my thoughts on the Word of God are formulated by the ideas and positions of man who may or may not be walking with God as opposed to the Word of God. Amen? And I start to worry, I start to dwell, I start to think. We had our, I uh, don't know why I'm getting into this, there must be a reason for it. When our superintendent, our new superintendent from the Assemblies of God came to our district meeting about a month or two ago, he used one certain guy on TV, he said, that you pastors would be good to go on a news fast, basically, for certain commentators. The point is not that they may not be good, it may not be this, but if I'm not careful, I can allow my world to be influenced and shaped only by everything going on, rather than the Word of God. And it's important to know what's going on, and I, I can't be salt and light to the world if I don't know what's going on in the world, right? I have to be aware, or I can't speak to it effectively. Relevant, <laughs> but I have to have that. But I have to be place where I place Jesus often withdrew, and I come back. Lord, what is your word saying? If I feel like the Lord speaks something to me, I validate that. Lord, uh, what are you saying? What are you doing? Amen. It's just it's a it's a lost start. I've shared on some before, and there's probably some here needs it because I felt secretly that for the most part. Let me wrap up with a couple other things about the pearl. Um, it's also made of beauty. The 
pearl is a gem that reflects light and gives light. And so the pearl can reflect the rainbow. <laughs> rainbow is something else. It speaks of the covenant of God. Amen? And, and, and there's a, a chapter in Psalms that I can't remember it. There's a picture of Jesus speaking to his church. It's prophetic. And there's the, the woman, and she says, the glory is within. She wears a coat of many colors, just like Joseph. We're called to be salt and light. You're the light of the world. See, so down the hill cannot be hidden, right? There's a certain glow and a certain light. One of my favorite testimonies we've got here is Marjorie told me one day that she went to the mall. I believe it was the mall. And someone said, I think I can tell you're a Christian. You seem to glow, you seem to shine. All of us should be envious of the Lord for that. <laughs> Lord, I want someone to say that to me because there's a certain shine that comes on you. I can be, find myself hidden in a place where the Lord's just formed me and wrapping right? himself around me. And sometimes there's irritants, just like I said before, there's an irritant that comes with the oyster. Sometimes irritants as well can be a good thing. And the irritants can shape it. And, you know, the pearl was supposed to be a gem that does have no blemish to it. There's no blemish. And he said if there is a blemish to it, there's a certain thing that can do to clean off the blemish. It's supposed to be a reminds me of a church without spot and wrinkle washed in the blood of the Lamb. It's about, and then it's a pearl, not blemish, and it's formed and molded. And sometimes the irritants are the shape of the beginning and the foundation of a beautiful pearl that the Lord forms. That's <laughs> His church. Our natural default is to run from irritants. I had an irritant at work this week, like I just said. <laughs> Real irritant. Throw me up the wall. It's only not like what made by vocational. You're right, irritant at work. Just me. <laughs> working with other people. And your default can be, I'm just going to run from this. They're wrong. But I start to say, you know what, Lord? I don't want my default being someone else is always wrong. What are you teaching me in this? Or why does that response evoke that reaction to an irritant? So Lord, how can you form me to be a, a choice vessel that can be shown to demonstrate that can glow the rainbow cup of God to all the earth? Through this irritant, what are you teaching me in that moment? Here it comes another place. I've got a problem, something going on at work, something in my family, something happening here or there. Or that's an irritant. So instead of drowning out that chaos with noise, TV and things like that, Lord, I'm going to go to you, draw, look the wilderness to pray. I'm going to seek you. Lord, what does your word say about this? Lord, this reaction and response isn't good. Lord, this is an irritant to me. Going to use this to make it into a choice vessel that people can make be seen in all the world. Amen? Yeah. That's what we're called to be, is who we're called to do, be, and who we're called to do. I'm going to end with this. Pearl of light, I said that. Pearl of God, blemish. Another great truth in that. The pearl also has, this is my last point, tremendous unity. There's different layers to it. It's one unit. I don't think it's an accident. He says he went out seeking for beautiful pearls, and he found the pearl of great price. Remember last week I said, Our Father in heaven, not my, but our. No room for selfishness in my prayers. When I consider who I am in God, it's not just me. There's a layer here, there's a layer there, there's a layer there, there's a layer there. Because he's forming and shaping all of us together, is he not? Amen. He does that and he forms us to pearls, but he makes us into a pearl and seen in all the world. Amen. In those times, the, the uh, powerful women, the, the emperor's wives, they said the emperors would actually show their great wealth. They would garden the pearls, put them in vinegar and drink it to show how wealthy they are. The pearls were millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars. They went all over to the highest and best places. Every place you go to church, in our influence, Carry every sphere of society. Amen. It's like a pearl. Lord, we thank you that you're good. Lord, that you're teaching us good things. Father, I pray, my, my prayer for us as a people, Lord, my prayer for us as a church, is Lord, you would teach us, Lord, the, the art that's, that's so hard, it's harder today than it's been in the past, Lord, of quieting ourselves in solitude to be with you, to meditate on your word, to meditate on your goodness. Lord, to allow ourselves to be formed in quietness and hiddenness, the irritants, Father. 
that we can be a choice vessel and pearl that you desire to show in all the earth. Jesus, we love you, we honor you, and we say and confess you are a good God and you're faithful. We bless you. In your wonderful name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you all. Thank you for coming. Visitors, there's also snacks and things downstairs. Uh, come down and hang out for a little bit if you're able to with coffee. So God bless you all. Amen.